Well, thank you, everyone, and good afternoon. Today is uh, May 22nd, 2020. This is our community and media update and briefing. I uh, want to just begin by, of course, recognizing this upcoming weekend and, of course, Memorial Day. Um, first and foremost, uh, obviously, it's a, it's a solemn time. We remember uh, all the, uh, the, the brave uh, men and women who uh, we have lost uh, to those that have been protecting our country, protecting our freedoms, um, our ability to be a, a community. And so um, I know we're going to celebrate this weekend with family and friends, I'm sure, in our own uh, different ways. But we're going to be, of course, um, with family and friends. Let's also think about uh, all of those uh, brave Americans that gave uh, their lives and who we remember uh, today on, um, and throughout the whole weekend, really, as we, go, as we lead up to Memorial Day, um, their contributions and sacrifices. Uh, and also, as a reminder, this weekend, um, while we are uh, honoring Memorial Day, it's also important that we're staying safe this entire weekend. Uh, moving forward, it's really about taking safety into our own hands, uh, knowing that um, when we are um, outside our homes, there's always risk, uh, and that we are minimizing those, and that we're taking care of the most vulnerable in our community. So please, let's continue to be safe. Uh, COVID-19 is still out there, and it's still affecting people, um, and in some cases, taking their lives. Um, let me begin with some, some data uh, of the snapshot of today. And then I want to talk about some broader data. Um, joining us is Kelly Colopy, who is the director of our Long Beach Health Department. She's going to be able to answer questions that relates to, to, the, to the health data, um, but also has some data to, to review of her own. Of course, have Alice, who's going to do our Spanish translation at the end, our recap, and then Paola, who's doing our ASL as well. So as of today, we have 1,513 residents who have tested positive. 1,024 who have recovered. Um, today, we lost two additional Long Beach residents. Uh, both had underlying health conditions. Our prayers and thoughts go to them and their families. Uh, and it brings a total deaths uh, in Long Beach to 70 of COVID-19. And again, it's the uh, um, COVID-19 is the leading cause of death um, as it relates to Long Beach, whether you're looking at any given year on homicides or, or car crashes or uh, other serious um, uh, fatalities. Of the 70, 55 have been associated with long-term care facilities. So uh, two weeks ago um, from uh, today, uh, we began uh, relaxing our safer at home uh, orders and guidelines. And um, it, seems, uh, it seems like a much longer time ago, but it, it, it's been 14 days since we made some significant changes to those orders. And as you remember, we essentially moved into uh, the governor's announced stage two and so we had met the stage one preparedness. Now we were in the second stage. And what that meant for us is, of course, reopening uh, a bunch of uh, curbside retail. Uh, we'd already been doing the restaurant retail. Uh, we also opened up um, some manufacturing opportunities. And we opened up uh, a lot of recreation across the city. So uh, public trails and walkways. Of course, we, we opened up beach, uh, beach paths, beach trails. Our beaches are now open for active recreation nature trails, golf courses, um, active recreation, tennis centers. And so that all began to happen uh, two weeks ago over the course of a few days. Um, and through that time, I want to first be, uh, begin by thanking all of you uh, for doing the right thing and for, uh, for continuing to be safe. Uh, we still have folks that need to follow the rules a bit better. Um, but most people are doing the right thing and keeping folks safe. And we shared some analysis a couple of weeks ago as to how we were doing. So I want to update folks on those. And I want to start with um, going through these indicators. These are the indicators and the data that we're using to see how we're doing and, and, and how we can continue to move forward for additional openings um, as, as they are allowed through the state. So let me start with this first slide. This is a slide on PPE and supplies. Um, just as a, as a general update, we've given out over 1.6 uh, or have, I'm sorry, have in our supply over 1.6 million uh, PPE in our inventory. Um, within that inventory, in total, we have given out almost 60,000 N95 masks, uh, 31,000 surgical masks. We've given out uh, about 28,000 gowns and about 13,000 uh, face coverings. And so um, we, since that, since that uh, this emergency has started, we have really uh, uh, stepped up with PPE. We have inventory out there, but we're still collecting more for all of our um, skilled care facilities and others. 
And our PPE goes to first responders, healthcare facilities, long-term care facilities, uh, shelters, and some nonprofits in the city that are doing health work. And so that's the first indicator. Our inventory continues to slowly increase. Uh, we continue to give out more PPE. So we have the PPE necessary to stay safe. We continue, we had it two weeks ago. We continue to have it today. And that's an important indicator as we move forward. Uh, the next slide I wanna to talk to you about is the slide on the uh, number of COVID-19 cases uh, and deaths per 100,000 population. I think everyone can see the slides that are in front of them. The top slide, as you can see written there, is the cases per 100,000. The lower slide are deaths by 100,000. And what you can essentially see is that both cases and deaths, we remain uh, where we are essentially um, uh, doing slightly better uh, than the county on both metrics, um, but slightly behind the state also on both metrics. And so while the state overall um, is doing a, 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 a better than the city, um, the city continues to outpace uh, the, the, the county. Um, and, and again, you know, these cases and these deaths are all serious. They're all real people and families, um, but we are, we are doing um, somewhat better uh, than, than the county on both of these, but we still have a lot of work to do. So that again, that snapshot, we showed that graph two weeks ago. Now, two weeks later, after two weeks of reopenings, there aren't significant changes to that data. We are holding steady in the, in the kind of trajectory of our comparisons to the county and to uh, uh, the state of California. I want to take you to this next graph. This is our COVID cases by episode date. And I have, want to explain this just a little bit. Uh, first, we should be all aware that we have dramatically increased our testing capacity. We have six testing locations. We've conducted over 27,000 tests uh, at, at, our, at our locations. And um, I, I'd like to share one thing that we have that's been a change from the last time we discussed this chart, is as testing has exponentially expanded across the state, there have been more and more backlogs that have happened. And every, every city and county is facing this issue. And so earlier on, we were getting less uh, batches of, of, of positive cases at one time because the, the, the labs were doing a better job. Today's environment, we are getting cases um, and batches of cases sometimes, um, day, days and days, and sometimes weeks after. And this has been a statewide issue. It's certainly an issue in Long Beach. And I say that because, as you can see, if you just look at the graph on its own, you could conclude that our cases by episode date are doing uh, better. Um, but the truth is, is that we are lagged on those. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Kelly, but it's, it's your assessment or the health department's assessment that we are likely on, on cases by episode uh, either holding steady or in some cases we might be seeing even more, slightly more cases by episode date than we normally have in the weeks prior. And I think that's, that's been the case if, 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 if I didn't get that correct. And yeah. so while the chart um, uh, might look better, it looks better than it probably is because of the delays in cases we're likely holding steady, but also seeing some increases in the cases by episode date. And so that's, that's a critical um, uh, chart for us to look at. Uh, the next chart is, is one of the most important, and that is hospitalizations. And if you look at this chart, uh, you see two bars and two graphs. One is the hospitalizations as reported, and then the darker one is the updated hospitalization, which is the actual number, because that changes Again, there are delays, and hospitals will get us the information sometimes uh, or are the coroner or others later than, than, than we have them. So uh, if, you can, if you look at the, 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 the darker blue, what you see in hospitalizations um, is essentially, as, as, as the health department has stated, it generally has been flat. There has been maybe a slight uptick uh, recently um, it's too early to tell if that uptick is beginning to, to decrease some. We need more, more, more data. Uh, but 
the health department, Dr. Uh, Dr. Davis, uh, Ms. Colopy, uh, neither describe what we see in front of us as any type of spike or a significant increase, but generally flat, or perhaps we may have seen a slight increase, uh, and perhaps we're seeing a slight decrease. We're not, we still don't have enough data in this yet. And so, um, but there is nothing in the hospitalization uh, data that is uh, uh, overly concerning to the health department uh, uh, as far as, as, um, as it relates to where we're at. And so those numbers um, uh, seem to be generally stable. Maybe they're going up some, maybe they're going down a little bit, but they've been back and forth, quite frankly, over the course of the last, uh, last couple of weeks. Um, but if you look at, for example, where we are today, as to where we are maybe three or four weeks ago, certainly there is an increase in hospitalizations if you go back just a little bit further. And I think that's pretty clear. I um, want to talk about the uh, hospital bed capacity because this is really important and we look at these uh, at, at this information every day. Um, we have over 1,500 area hospital beds available. Uh, bed usage right now is at about 60 percent, so we have uh, we have room in, in, our, in, our, in our beds if we had a major emergency right now or breakout. Um, however, the 60% is higher than it was last two weeks ago, which we were closer to 50%. Um, that, is not a, that increase is not a reflection of uh, a large increase in COVID cases. It's a reflection of hospitals um, allowing some additional types of surgeries, additional types of procedures, um, uh, that are that are now being allowed or, or, or being brought into hospitals, and, and again, this does not include the surge bed capacity that we have. We have an additional 400 capacity beds for surge capacity. We have our convention center beds that are still available. We set that up a long time ago. Uh, we have over 300 ventilators in our area hospitals, and another key metric: still, our ventilators are still at about 30 percent use. And they were at approximately 30% use two weeks ago. So uh, we, know, we want you to know that, um, you know, that if, if someone ends up in the hospital and they have a, a respiratory issue, we do have the ventilators available uh, to take care of them. Uh, and so those numbers are really important because as we reopen things over two weeks, uh, you know, we still have the, the ventilators are still available. We still have the bed capacity. We have plenty of room in our hospitals, and, and that's really necessary to give our hospitals the ability to prepare appropriately. And so those are um, those are the data points that that I shared last time. And I think Kelly can 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 also give some more specifics. But what the way that um, the, the medical team, the health team have interpreted the data that we're where we are today comparatively to where we were two weeks ago is uh, generally pretty steady. And so we, uh, what we have not seen is a, a rapid, uh, is a, uh, is what we have not seen is somehow a surge or spike that is overly concerning to, to the city. Um, we have also not seen uh, any sort of uh, uh, dramatic improvements um, to the city either. And so uh, certainly things are, are generally where they were two weeks ago. As I just went over, some of the data might have gone up a little bit. Some of the other data might have, might have improved a little bit. But overall, uh, there has not been any sort of um, significant changes uh, to the data. Why is that important? because we actually are at a different place today than we were two weeks ago as it relates to reopening. So two weeks ago, a lot less was open than it was today. Today, with all the additional active recreation and all the additional reopenings, um, the fact that we have generally stayed consistent is, 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 a, is, a, is a positive sign. How, however, there, I think there's two caveats to that, which, which I understand and I think um, Kelly understands also. One is, is two weeks of data, when you think about delays uh, and, uh, and what's happening with, with, with the positive rates, is just not enough to know if we really are hitting a plateau or if things are improving or, or not. And so in the weeks ahead, this data collection continues to be really, really important. Yes, 14 days is the minimum you should be looking at, 
for any trends, but it is literally the minimum is 14 days. And so you've got to go beyond that as we move forward to look at any additional trends. Uh, and then the other piece of that that is, um, uh, that is important is besides this kind of snapshot of where we are, we are um, we still are very concerned about uh, our, the cases as far as our positivity rate in the city of Long Beach. That's something that the health department is monitoring very carefully. Um, and, um, and we want to continue to watch the hospitalization rate over the course of the next week as well. And so those are all, uh, are, are all issues that we've got uh, ahead of us. Uh, want to also say, as I turn this over, that um, again, as a reminder, we have opened, uh, uh, from a retail perspective, a restaurant perspective, what is allowed under the current state health order. Um, we are going to be making, uh, uh, looking at making slight adjustments in two areas in the health order, not today, but we're discussing those in the days ahead. Uh, one is around uh, drive through parades or celebrations. These could be maybe for uh, graduations, they could be for birthday parties. I know this is already happening in many places, but we want to create some guidelines also to do it safely and in partnership with the school district. So you're going to see some information on that, and you also might see some adjustments as it relates to drive ups. So um, you're, you're, you're seeing some proposals for, for uh, cars to come up and maybe get served in their car or uh, some modifications to restaurants. So that's also being discussed. Um, nothing's been changed yet in the health order today, but we are discussing it in, 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 in the, over the course of this next couple of days. So that's what you're seeing as far as, as far as changes. We want folks to have a safe, uh, safe weekend. I'm going to let um, Kelly Colopy now uh, discuss some additional uh, information as it relates to where we land uh, with our regional and state partners and what indicators we're looking at um, to see how we can reopen uh, safe for us to move ahead. So Ms. Colopy. Thank you, Mayor, and good, af good afternoon, everybody. Um, we get a lot of calls and emails saying, you know, when can we open this? When can we open this? And then you're starting to see in media through newspapers, social media, and others that, that uh, there are you know, other jurisdictions where people are being able to open things that we're not allowing in the city of Long Beach. So I want to share a little bit about the process. Uh, the state has developed a process for which people can move through the phase, phase two more quickly. And we'd like to share with you sort of what that looks like uh, moving forward. So. Uh, as you know, the governor outlined stages of when the state can reopen, and right now we're in early stage two, which is for low-risk businesses. Everything that is opening is opening with requirements to meet distancing and safety guidelines and other modifications. But the kinds of things you've been hearing about are curbside retail, manufacturers, logistics, childcare, um, office-based businesses, car washes, pet grooming, landscape companies, those kinds of things have been allowed in the early phase, but many of them still require, you know, face covers and distancing and those kinds of things. Um, on May 7th, the state issued what we call a local, um, a local variance opportunity uh, that acknowledged that many rural counties that are not hard hit by COVID-19, uh, many rural counties have had very few cases um, moving forward. And so they were being really impacted by you know, their local business without, without experiencing the issues around COVID. So the state set some criteria that those counties could work to meet and to demonstrate that they could open safely. And it allowed them to move more quickly through phase two. Um, and so a number of counties, what we're calling, attested to what that looks like. And, um, and so they have been able to open. Uh, none of those counties have been able to move into the stage three. So counties who met the variance, they can safe with the new safety protocols and modifications, can also open things such as destination retail, like shopping malls and swap meets, dine-in restaurants and schools. So you may be hearing that, like I've heard in, in uh, in Sacramento, there was something saying that maybe some small fitness centers or different restaurants or things are opening. Um, they can't fully open, and they have to show that they're meeting the distance requirements and other safety protocols. At, um, and as I said, at this time, no business can move into, into the stage three, which are things like salons and tattoo parlors, uh, gyms, like large gyms and fitness studios, indoor museums or libraries, community centers, pools and playgrounds, uh, nightclubs and concert venues and other live audience kinds of things, theme parks and higher education. They all fit into stage three, and no one is allowed to move into those at this time. 
Recently, the state announced new criteria that allowed more urban counties to apply and to be able to move more quickly through phase two. Uh, counties must attest to their ability to, uh, that they have local stability of their cases and that they have specific levels of preparedness. And those guidelines really focus on your shelter capacity for people experiencing homelessness, uh, stable hospitalizations and the ability to meet a hospital surge, um, your testing positivity rates, your testing capacity, and supports for skilled nursing facilities. So that you're going to see a table uh, that basically shows where we are for each of those. So for our shelter capacity, we do have the capacity to shelter 15% of our persons experiencing homelessness were we to have an outbreak, so we've met that criteria. Uh, we have stable hospitalizations. We've had less than a 5% average uh, increase um, over the last seven days, so, so we have met that criteria. The positivity rate has to be under 8%, and we have not met that criteria. Uh, our testing capacity um, exceeds the 1.5 tests per, per thousand residents, so we've met that. Um, and we have the ability to handle a 35% surge for our hospitalizations. We've met that criteria. In terms of skilled nursing facilities, we must have plans in place to address outbreaks in all the different facilities, as well as a 14-day supply of PPE for each of our long-term uh, skilled nursing facilities. And we are developing the capacity to do that. So we've not yet met that, met that criteria um, either. So, I just, you know, we are, those are the key elements that we are tracking on as a city. Uh, we're working to ensure that we're maintaining the criteria that we've already met and building our capacity uh, for the others. Um, so we are tracking these elements, but the state is requiring that we align with LA County. So while we're not there yet either, we can't open as the city of Long Beach as a health jurisdiction. Right now, um, we are really tracking along with LA County moving forward. Uh, we have approximately, there are about now 50 counties that have been approved. Um, the more urban and large jurisdictions have not been able to meet the right criteria, which include LA County, Orange County, San Francisco, and, and our city of Long Beach as well. Um, but we'll be keeping the we'll be keeping track of the indicators, and uh, we'll keep you updated as we make progress, and also our progress uh, to be able to attest um, as the city of Long Beach. And so, so. just to, and to to add to that, I think it's really important because we're getting a lot of questions about that as well. Uh, is that um, there was there was uh, earlier on weeks ago there was there was questions and uh, back and forth as to whether. Because Long, there, because Long Beach has its own health department, whether or not we could uh, move separately of LA County if we were choosing to go through this kind of expedited process. And so that is, uh, I think, a question that the health department's been asking. Um, I think a lot of folks, because we had our own health department, were getting indications that yes, if we ever met those, which we, we have not ever yet, obviously, could we move faster? So the response that currently the health department has received from the state is that the LA, that count that counties is what they are using, not uh, individual uh, city health juris or, or health jurisdictions. And so, Pasadena, even though they have a health department, they have to they have to meet the LA County health indicators. Long Beach the same. Uh, and so, uh, what we what I think we can say is that um, cer certainly today doesn't make much of a difference because even if we were counted on our own. Long Beach does not meet any requirements to move any faster. Uh, however, um, could we meet, be meeting those requirements maybe a couple of weeks from now um, and be in a situation where we've met the state's requirements as a city, but, the, but when we're included in the county, uh, we don't meet those requirements? And that's something that could happen in a few weeks. We're not sure. And so we are working with the state right now. Uh, we've made the, uh, these, um, uh, the requests as well. Uh, but because we have our own health department, um, the city of Long Beach uh, believes that we should be treated as our own health jurisdiction. And, um, and so that's a, we're having a positive conversation with the state about this right now. So, you know, they, the, obviously they have set guidelines um, uh, and it's not a, an issue for today, but it certainly could be an issue in the weeks ahead if Long Beach continues um, to kind of uh, have better health indicators than the county as a whole. And so that's what we're looking at right now. But we're going to keep pressing hard to meet all these indicators and, and then because that will help us make our case, I think, st stronger. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at right now. And I want to just kind of end and then take questions by just reminding people that uh, while, while we haven't seen uh, enormous uh, a, a spike or a surge, which were the two issues that we were looking, looking at, uh, just remind folks that this is this is a serious disease. 
COVID-19, there's still no vaccine. Uh, it's still highly contagious. And um, the vulnerable populations uh, can, as we can see, if, if, if contracted, can lead to death. Um, uh, and really, it could lead to death for anyone, whether someone's vulnerable or not, but especially those populations. And so I just ask that I know that we're get, that a lot of folks are restless. Um, trust me, I, I would love to spend this weekend uh, uh, you know, with, with big gatherings of friends and in, enjoying uh, the sun with everyone um, in, a, in a way that brought us together. And I know that's not possible. So just please know that this is still a serious disease. But I do want to thank you because because of your work, we haven't had some enormous spike in the city of Long Beach. And uh, let's continue that. Let's continue to be safe, to keep each other in mind, to take care of our workers, and monitor this data. And we'll have a lot more information in the, in the week ahead. Um, and we expect, where, where we expect we're gonna see some changes what, as far as what's on the horizon um, are, are the areas where the governor has discussed. We know that changes to our restaurant operations are on the horizon which is why we're planning uh, for, for those. That is something that we know is, is gonna be happening next. And so um, that's what we're anticipating and we're all working together on that. So thank you. Uh, with that, we're gonna take any questions from, um, from the media. First up, we have Haley from Press-Telegram and Southern California News Group. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so my question is for Kelly. Um, can you just shed some more light on the two indicators? I think it was the testing positive rate and the um, plans for skilled nursing facilities uh, that Long Beach hasn't met and where we stand on those right now. Um, yeah, so in terms of our positivity rate, um, it shifts a little bit as the, as the data are, are coming in. We're at approximately between nine and 10% is our positivity rate currently. Um, so that, uh, where you know each the the way it's calculated is, is um, per seven days, and so we're going to the point where we have where we know that we have the most accurate and complete data, which is about a week ago, and at that point it was uh, approximately nine nine and a half percent. Um, in terms of our skilled nursing facilities, uh, we have each skilled nursing facility has to have 14 days of PPE as well as a plan uh, for an outbreak, and we are working very closely with our skilled nursing facilities, and they do have most of them do have plans. Um, um, uh, for how, you know, for in case they have an outbreak. Uh, the other pieces, many of them have PPE, um, uh, like at the facility, uh, sufficient to meet the need. Others we need to make sure as a city we have the capacity to backfill in case they don't have that. So we're just clarifying that all those are in place moving forward. And, and the, 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 the skill, the, the PPE one is going to be, I think, um, we're developing that and we think that could be met, uh, uh, you know, easier than the other the other one and the other one i think is going to take is, is the one that i think the health department's really looking at um and uh that's that's going to be the that's going to be the harder challenge than the ppe uh development at all at all of our skilled nursing care facilities next up we have rachel jordan from abc7 news Hey, so I'm wondering if there's any information on how many people are getting tested and if we're anywhere near close to reaching the city's um, testing capacity. And at what point, if at any point, will the city decide to open up testing for everyone and not just those experiencing symptoms? Yeah, so at this time, uh, we're averaging... So Right now, our testing capacity is 1,100, and we are averaging um, somewhere between 750 to 830 per day um, on the days that all of our testing is open. Uh, the issue right now, as the mayor earlier mentioned, is the lab's capacity to actually run all those tests in a time that is quick enough for us to be able to track people and do the contact tracing and other and other pieces. So um, we are testing folks, but we want to make sure that our that the labs that we're utilizing can get those results back. Uh, recently the delays have been, you know, they've been more like five days to seven days, and that's not a quick enough turnaround for us to be able to do the work we need to do to be able to quarantine and isolate folks. You're hearing a lot about contact tracing. So um, we want to make sure the labs can meet those criteria, and at the point that they are meeting that capacity, we'll be able to open it up uh, more broadly for anyone to test. Yeah, and I think uh, just to, to add to that, we were moving towards uh, opening up uh, more asymptomatic testing, but then this huge backlog at the labs uh, happened as well. And we want to make sure that that just everyone that is currently getting tested can get their lab results in, a, in an expeditious timeline. 
Um, and so uh, if that kind of backlog gets cleared, uh, then we should have maybe some, some, some good news about that expansion very soon. But it's really a backlog question as it relates to the labs. Next up, we have Kelly from the Long Beach Post. Yes, I, um, I have two questions for you guys. First is on the backlog. It sounds like the backlog is having a significant impact on our positivity rate. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the city is doing to address this backlog and when we can start seeing our numbers being more um, accurately reflected? And second question, some people might find it a little concerning that Long Beach is now being, with, its, with our own health department, we're now being lumped in with the county when we've been working hard to produce our own numbers. Can you talk a little bit about what the city might do to do about this if we're going to try to assert our independence on this as our own health department? I'll take the second one. The first one. Yeah, so I think um, in terms of the backlog, we are working very closely with the lab. So what we are... Uh, what we're doing right now is is working to align uh, the number of appointments to make sure that the turnaround time. So they're they're working on the backlog. We're working with them uh, moving forward to make sure that the that the number of people who are being tested are meeting their capacities, and then as they're increasing their capacities, uh, we'll be we'll be aligning the number of people who can who can be tested. So it's a we see it as a short-term issue. Um, they are t the labs are telling us that within a week or so that we should be the backlog should be uh, completed and then moving forward. So um, we're very hopeful that 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 will be you know that will be addressed um, very soon. And I think Mayor, you want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, first of all, we 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 absolutely should be um, you know we should be evaluated on our own as a city. I mean, there's no, there's no question about that. And so there's three or there's only three cities in the state. Uh, that are having this issue, Long Beach being one, because we have our own health jurisdiction. And so I think you're absolutely right. Uh, we, uh, we've, you know, uh, the staffs are talking, they've made it, they've made it clear. Uh, we're having some conversations. Obviously, this is something that uh, we've, that I personally have, uh, uh, have talked to key staff in the governor's office. And at the next opportunity where kind of, there's going to be some opportunity for me to have some further discussions, we're going to push this very, very hard. Um, the staffs are, are the, the, our staff is already working with the state staff. They understand what our position is. Um, same thing with the governor's staff. They understand what our position is. And uh, I'm optimistic, optimistic that we can resolve this issue uh, because we are very unique. So we, we understand that there are only three cities in the state that are in this position. And we also understand, I think what we're being told is, you know, hey, we get that, but you, you haven't even met the indicators even on your own. The issue is what happens when we meet those indicators possibly uh, uh, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks from now. And so I want to make sure that we never get to that place, but that we figure out this issue now so that if and when we meet the indicators, we were able to make our own decisions independently of the rest of the county. Because obviously we draw up our own health orders separately of the county. We draw up all of our own health guidelines separately of the county. That is the way we operate. And so we should not be lumped in to um, the county just on the key indicator piece. So we, we know that's a newer program. So we're going to push to make sure we get the adjustment. And, and just, and I'm, the reason why I'm, I, I'm more optimistic is that uh, this indicator program has seen changes the entire time. So they keep adjusting it. The indicators change, uh, the requirements of what they're expecting from cities and counties change. Uh, and so uh, this is something also that, that needs to change as well. That concludes our questions for today. Okay, thank you. Let me go ahead and do this, the, the recap in Spanish. Muchas gracias, Alcalde Garcia. Ay, gracias, Directora Kelly Colopy. Muy, muy buenas tardes a todos ustedes. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy, esta tarde, viernes. Um, este, queremos empezar con, uh, eh, nomás recordándoles que este fin de semana que vamos a conmemorar el día de Memorial Day, día feriado, por favor recuerden de celebrar de manera segura y responsable. Um, también empezamos con nuestros números. Desde hoy tenemos 1,513 residentes que han salido positivos al coronavirus. Um, <coughs> alrededor de 1,024 personas se han recuperado. Y desde nuestra última sesión informativa, hemos perdido a cinco personas adicionales a este virus. Todos tenían condiciones de salud sub subyacentes y en total, esto eleva al número de nuestras muertes del coronavirus a 70. 55 de estas muertes han, se han asociado con los centros de enfermería y de, la, de atención de largo plazo. Como hemos expresado varias veces y 
Continuaremos recordándoles a todos que esta emergencia de salud pública, um, abordar coronavirus y la salud y la seguridad de nuestra comunidad sigue siendo nuestra prioridad. Nuestro dedicado equipo de empleados de la ciudad de Long Beach continúa trabajando las 24 horas mientras enfrentamos esta pandemia y seguimos navegando juntos por esta crisis sin precedentes. Hace un par de semanas compartimos unos análisis de nuestros datos hasta el momento y hoy nos gustaría proporcionar una actualización de dónde estamos de, desde hoy. Comenzamos con una actualización de nuestros suministros de equipo protectivo personal que nuestro inventario se mira muy bien, el P PPE o como lo conocemos en español es equipo de protección personal. Desde, el, desde marzo hemos uh, proveído 60 mil máscaras N95, casi 30 mil máscaras um, de cirugía, este, casi 30 mil uh, vestidos de protección para los centros médicos y casi 13 mil coberturas faciales. Desde que declaramos nuestra emergencia de salud, hemos aumentado los suministros y seguimos también colectando más para que nuestro inventario sea suficiente por, por los, los días y semanas que siguen. Esta uh, distribución de PPE este, siempre va primeramente a nuestros primeros respondedores, los centros médicos, instalaciones de cuidado a largo plazo de, y de enfermería y también a los refugios para personas necesitadas. Continuamos analizando la cantidad de casos y de muertes del coronavirus. Y nuestras, unas, algunas de las imágenes que vieron hace momento cuando presentó el alcalde García um, nos enseña que estamos encima de la tasa estatal eh, para ambos casos, pero continuamos nuestra tendencia por debajo de la ciudad, los números de la ciudad de Los Ángeles y también los números de muerte del condado de Los Ángeles. Uh, nuestra, nuestras pruebas para el coronavirus. Hemos aumentado considerablemente nuestra capacidad de pruebas con seis sitios de prueba. Hasta ahora hemos realizado más de 27 mil pruebas del coronavirus. Anticipamos que los números reflejados en el área sombreada que vieron en la imagen de la tabla aumentará a medida que lleguen los resultados de las pruebas pendientes y se evalúen personas adicionales. Como les hemos dicho en los días anteriormente que han habido algunos atrasos en los laboratorios para recibir nuestros resultados. Eso significa que vamos a ver un aumento en los números y los casos positivos. Ahora para nuestros números de hospitalización activa de los últimos 60 días, hemos visto un ligero aumento durante la última semana en el número de hospitalizaciones. Este número se ha mantenido estable. Um, no hemos visto un gran aumento en hospitalización hospitalizaciones. Sin embargo, esto significa que todavía estamos viendo personas con complicaciones graves del coronavirus y debemos continuar haciendo lo que podamos para proteger a aquellos que puedan tener un mayor riesgo de complicaciones que les pueden que pueda causar que ingresen al hospital. Durante esta etapa también hemos mantenido nuestra capacidad de camas en el hospital. Tenemos un total de 1,500 camas de hospital disponibles por toda la ciudad de Long Beach. Hemos visto en nuestros hospitales y las tendencias de la unidad crítica estabilizarse. El uso de nuestras camas es aproximadamente del 60% en capacidad normal y eso no incluye nuestras camas de sobreextensión. Tenemos más de 300 ventiladores Solo alrededor del 30% están en uso, por lo que también tenemos capacidad en eso. Como pueden, podemos ver también en una de las imágenes, imágenes es que, ¿qué, ¿qué significa esto para nosotros? O a medida que continuamos a través de la fase inicial o en la etapa 2, como ha con, conseguido el, el gobierno de, del estado, no queremos acelerar el proceso y ver que nuestros números aumenten. Sin embargo, continuamos monitoreando los datos e identificando lo que podemos hacer para aliviar las restricciones. Para unas buenas noticias, también en unos pocos días tendremos más información sobre los otros negocios que tendrán oportunidad de reabrir um, sanamente y responsablemente. Y también algunos uh, 
datos y información sobre celebraciones como en, en estilo de un desfile. Tal vez han visto por la tele, en las noticias, y por ejemplo, podemos um, practicar sanamente y responsablemente algunos desfiles para celebrar muchas gradaciones que van a estar um, en estos próximos días y semanas. Y también um, como para celebraciones como para cumpleaños, también se pueden, van a poder demostrar esas celebraciones responsablemente sobre desfiles, pero tendremos más información en los próximos días sobre eso. Ahora, algunos datos también de, que vienen del estado de California um, sobre la etapa 2. Estamos viendo que estamos muy temprano, en, en el área de muy temprana de la, de la etapa 2, pero queremos platicar un poco sobre las aberturas con modificaciones, unas ventas de negocios minoristas con opción de recoger en la banqueta o en la calle, como hemos visto recientemente, Um, negocios de logísticas, cuidado de niños para aquellos fuera de, de la fuerza laboral esencial, negocio basado en las oficinas, servicios selectos como lavado de autos, aseos de mascota y de jardinería, museos que, que tienen áreas en, al aire libre y espacios de galería abierta y otros espacios públicos con modificaciones. Um, desde el 7 de mayo, California emitió una oportunidad de varianza de reglamento a través de un proceso de autocertificación del condado para cumplir con junto de criterios relacionados con la prevalencia y preparación de enfermedades. Esta varianza permite que los condados y las jurisdicciones adopten aspectos de la etapa 2 a un ritmo y en un orden determinado por el oficial de salud local. Originalmente fue diseñado para ayudar a los condados rurales que tenían pocos casos o ningunos o muy bajas muertes para poder demostrar que estaban seguros de abrir más rápidamente que el estado en general. Um, todos los condados aún no pueden pasar a la etapa 3 de la apertura. Aquellos que solicitan la variación pueden avanzar más rápidamente a través de la etapa 2. Sin ella, los condados pueden moverse al ritmo del estado. Pero recordamos que estas son áreas rurales pequeñas con número de po población más bajo, no, no como nuestras ciudades grandes o condados, ciudades donde hay demasiada gente y todavía no es saludable o responsable en reabrir. Etapa 2 ampliada con certificación. Los próximos cambios en la orden que, de quedarse en casa moverán todo el estado metódicamente a través de la apertura aún más. Los condados con certificación de variancia pueden progresar para abrir estos sectores más rápidamente de acuerdo con su plan de modificación especificado por del condado. Um, todavía no está permitido la etapa 2 servicios personales como salones de belleza, salones de tatuajes, gimnasios y estudios de ejercicio aquí en nuestra ciudad. Los interiores de museos todavía no son permitidos, centros comunitarios que incluyen piscinas públicas, parques infantiles y áreas de picnic, por servicios religiosos y ceremonias culturales de capacidad limitada todavía tampoco no son adecuadas para reabrir discotecas, sala de conciertos, audiencia en vivo, deportes, festivales, parques um, temáticos, hoteles, alojamiento para vacaciones y turismo, viajes no esenciales o educación más alta como universidades y colegios todavía en este momento todavía están por um, decir no, no podemos abrir o reabrir esos servicios. El 18 de mayo se lanzó la siguiente ronda de variación para los condados que puedan dar fe de cumplir con criterios específicos que indican la estabilidad local de la propagación del coronavirus y los niveles específicos de preparación del condado. La segunda versión cambios los criterios para centrarse en el crecimiento de hospitalizaciones, casos y tasa de posit positividad. Nosotros tenemos que llegar a eh, seguir un criterio para la preparación en, para reabrir. En la última imagen que enseñamos, um, se puede, pueden ver que en un momento donde estamos en la ciudad de Long Beach actualmente. Tenemos que prepararnos suficiente para una capacidad de refugio. Por decir, 
um, las unidades de vivienda temporal para el albergue, al menos del 15% de los residentes del condado que se encuentren sin hogar en, en caso que haya un brote en esta población que requiera aislamiento, cuarentena de las personas afectadas. También nuestros hospitales. Los hospitales del condado debemos te, determinar que la prevalencia de los casos del coronavirus es lo suficiente baja como para contenerla rápidamente mediante la reintroducción de las características de la orden se permanezca en el hogar y el uso de la capacidad dentro del sistema de prestación de atención médica para brindar atención a, a los enfermos. So, tenemos que ver que nuestros números sigan bajos y nuestros números y la capacidad del hospital este, todavía sea baja. Um, la prueba de tasa de positividad, debemos tener la prueba de posi positividad por, por siete días menos del 8%. La capacidad de pruebas tiene que seguir alta debemos tener um, suficientes pruebas para el, el público. Um, sobre extensión hospital, hospitalaria, el condado debe determinar si la capacidad hospitalaria, incluidas las camas de los centros, los ventilado, ventiladores y el PPE, esté a capacidad para la atención médica. Y instalaciones de enfermería especializada, que ha sido nuestro gran problema en la ciudad de Long Beach. Debemos... Um, debemos mantener protecciones para las poblaciones vulnerables en nuestra ciudad como esos centros que hemos tenido problemas. Y so, entonces um, estamos y seguimos rastreando los elementos y datos, pero actualmente el estado exige que pasa, Pasadena, la ciudad de Pasadena, la ciudad de Long Beach, que son jurisdicciones de salud independientes, Um, se alineen con el condado de Los Ángeles. Estamos trabajando para abordar esto. Aproximadamente 50 condados han sido aprobados. Las jurisdicciones grandes y o más urbanas generalmente no, incluyendo al condado de Los Ángeles, el condado de Orange, San Francisco y también nosotros aquí en la ciudad de Long Beach. So, todavía vemos algunas semanas mientras que podamos reabrir um, completamente. Esto es todo por hoy. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Y muchas gracias también por estar con nosotros. Tienen, por, por favor, tengan uh, un weekend que está bonito con la familia. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Uh, obviously, Memorial Day is, is Monday, the holiday. And so we will be back on Wednesday. Um, so a little bit of a break, and we'll have more to share on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Thank you.